Yo, Dietrich Lappers, it's time to do one of my all-time favorite Schrodinger equation problems. Now, most of the time when you solve Schrodinger's equation, you stick some potential in, and oftentimes that represents an electric potential. However, what's less common is to solve the Schrodinger equation for an electron under the influence of a magnetic field. It turns out there is a famous exact solution to the Schrodinger equation for an electron in a constant magnetic field. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve Schrodinger's equation for this. I'm going to show you how to set up the Schrodinger equation coupled to a magnetic field. And then I'm going to show you how to solve it out for this case. It's really cool, partly because the math is extremely beautiful, partly because the physical intuition you see going on here is also very interesting, and partly just because it's kind of cool to see solving the Schrodinger equation for an electron in a magnetic field instead of an electric field. Now, in this problem, I pick the magnetic field to be in the z direction, and because a magnetic field yields a v cross b force, the particle should be unconfined in the z direction. It should only experience a force in the x and y directions, and it should be a force that causes the particle to spin around the magnetic field lines. Because of this, we expect the energy contribution to the energy eigenvalue from motion in the z direction to be that of just a free particle. Then we expect some sort of quantization because the magnetic field is causing the particle to bend back around on itself. It's causing it to go in a loop around the magnetic field lines. We expect that type of confinement to yield some sort of quantization, just like confinement usually does in quantum theory. And it turns out it absolutely does. It, however, is not quantization like the problem where you have an electron on a one-dimensional circle. It's not like that. The quantization actually ends up taking the form of a quantum harmonic oscillator. The energy levels are equidistant as far as the energy with the motion in the xy plane. It behaves like an isospectral oscillator as a result. That's the type of quantization you see showing up. And the wave function solutions for that part of the problem are, in fact, the Hermite polynomials. So you'll see how all that works. It's super interesting. It's super cool. I love this problem. I don't know why I've waited so long to show it on my YouTube channel. So here follows the math section where I actually show you how to do all the technical parts of this. In this video, the gauge selection will be the Coulomb gauge. So the scalar potential is taken to be zero, and the divergence of the vector potential is also taken to be zero. We will be picking a vector potential that corresponds to a magnetic field in the z direction and no electric field. Minimal coupling tells us that this is the Lagrangian for a particle interacting with an electromagnetic field in this particular gauge. We can calculate the canonical momentum. It turns out to be this. With the canonical momentum, we can then write down the Hamiltonian. Now considering specifically the problem of a free electron in a constant magnetic field in the z direction. This consideration gives the specific Schrodinger equation for this problem. So we have a magnetic field that's constant in the z direction. It must take this form. The three most obvious vector potentials we might select that satisfy the Coulomb gauge correspond to no electric field being present and a magnetic field of this form are these. This one can be related to this one via this gauge transformation. And then a similar gauge transformation can relate this one and this one, and by extension, gauge transformations can be used to relate this one and this one. Because they're all related by a gauge transformation, they all correspond to the same physics, and we can pick any one we like. These two are obviously simpler. In this problem, I happen to pick this one. Inserting that gives this Schrodinger equation. Now the energy of the electron can be neatly calculated by the ladder operator method. Basically, we will find that part of the Hamiltonian, the first two terms, can be factored into operators that behave just like those in the famous quantum harmonic oscillator problem. Namely, they are Hermitian conjugates of each other, and their commutation relations match. As a result of this, the contribution to the energy eigenvalues from this part of the Hamiltonian is simply the energy of the quantum harmonic oscillator. Specifically, it's given by the formula for the eigenvalues of that particular problem. Starting with the canonical momentum calculated above, one can solve for the velocity and then calculate a few interesting commutation relations. Subtracting this to the other side and dividing by the mass gives the velocity. Plugging it directly into the commutator and crunching the math gives this value for it. Specifically, it proceeds via three separate calculations that look much like this one, which I did for the xy component of the commutator. 
The next step in the harmonic oscillator factorization of the first two terms in the Hamiltonian is to introduce this quantity here, which is nu. We can see from this result up here and this definition that the commutator of these pi's simply equals this. Of course, one could just commute them directly, but I find it more fun to do the velocity commutators and then find these relations as trivial consequences. I didn't really have a particularly good reason, I just like doing it that way. In terms of these, the Hamiltonian can be written in this particular way here. Here comes the big moment. From this, the latter operators can be defined. It might not be obvious immediately that these do behave like ladder operators, but they actually do in fact turn out to be. We find that this product of them ends up equaling this, so then we can add a half in order to get the terms in the Hamiltonian that we're trying to rewrite. The Hamiltonian becomes this. We can clearly see something proportional to the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian in there. We can define the cyclotron frequency there, and now this really looks like the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian except with one extra term here for some unconstrained motion in the z direction. We can confirm that these operators behave like quantum harmonic oscillator raising and lowering operators by computing their commutator, which of course matches the result you get with the actual quantum harmonic oscillator operators. From the Hamiltonian in this form and our knowledge of the quantum harmonic oscillator, the energy is clearly just given by this. We have this contribution that we recognize from the harmonic oscillator part of the problem, and then this one which just corresponds to a free particle, where the last term is both mathematically evident given the form of the part of the Hamiltonian that gave rise to it, and intuitive because the magnetic field is in the z direction and provides a v cross b force. Therefore, the particle motion in the z direction should be completely free. With the energy known, the only thing left to do is to work out the eigenfunctions. So this is the Schrodinger equation that we got to by plugging this into there. Then we can rewrite this in an interesting way. Specifically, we can rewrite it like this and then insert the momentum operator values, which gets us here. Then prior research tells us that this ansatz is actually quite constructive to insert. And perhaps it's not that surprising, given how much y dependence there is on there, that something like this would be effective. So if we plug that in, we ultimately arrive at this equation. Now this equation isn't that transparent, but we can get a step closer to making it sensible by doing a change of variables. This change of variables ultimately reduces this equation a little bit to this one right here. We can then rearrange the constants and perform another change of variables given right here to yield this much simplified equation. In this epsilon quantity, if we scroll back up here for a moment, this will perhaps also give you a second chance to pause if you want to look in detail at my math. But this epsilon constant right here, we can see I substituted it in for this value here. It consists of the energy minus this term, which is just the energy contributed by free motion in the z direction and the energy eigenvalues. It cancels this term. So all we have left in this epsilon factor is the contribution to the energy from the harmonic oscillator-like part of the problem. So if we scroll back down here and plug that into this equation, we arrive here where I've just written out in this line explicitly the cancellation of those two terms to make it absolutely clear what's going on. So if we then plug in another ansatz that research before us has proven to be productive and then do a bunch more algebra and ultimately simplify down, we arrive at this one. This equation is obviously just Hermite's equation. It's the iconic equation solved by the Hermite polynomials. So we see that the solution g of rho just are the Hermite polynomials straight up. So then if we look back at our various ansatzes, we realize that this function that showed up in our first ansatz and it was broken apart in the second one just simply has this value. And then we can find that the full unnormalized wave function just has this value. So now we've got the energy eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions. We're all done. So here we can just summarize the answer. This is the full wave function where beta is just a normalization factor. Of course, the motion is unconstrained in one direction, so part of that normalization would be the nonsensical task of normalizing a plane wave. 
So you can't really get a nice normalized solution for the whole problem here. It doesn't really work like that. And these are the energy eigenvalues we formed, where to make it clear, I've written the definitions of the various substitutions we made that I have left in this summary of the solution. So that's how you solve the Schrodinger equation for an electron in a constant magnetic field in the z direction. Now you have seen how to solve the Schrodinger equation for an electron in a constant magnetic field. We started with the minimal coupled Lagrangian density for a particle in an electromagnetic field. We picked the Coulomb gauge, we calculated the Hamiltonian, we wrote the Schrodinger equation out, and we ultimately solved it partly by referencing our knowledge of the quantum harmonic oscillator as soon as we saw that part of the problem was going to take that form just to speed things up and also to cement just how cool the connection is between the two. We saw that the quantization associated with the xy plane motion really does take the form of that of an isospectral oscillator, a quantum harmonic oscillator specifically. And we saw that the motion in the z-direction absolutely is unconfined, and the contribution to the energy eigenvalues from that really is just that of free motion. So we saw that this quantum mechanics problem isn't just beautiful mathematics. It's also got some really epic physical intuition going on there. It's a really fun problem. I hope this helped you understand quantum theory a little better. I hope it motivated you to love quantum mechanics even more than you already did. If you found this useful, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.